Okay. Yeah. Okay. So maybe uh, we can begin. So uh, we are late. So if you have a class at ten, I don't know what to do. Yeah. So what to do? Should I not give a talk? I mean, the problem is that uh, how to deal with this situation. <laughs> Every day is the same thing. So I guess I'm going to uh, like what you're doing. Let me know uh, what I have here, whether it is relevant to my talk or not. I don't know. We'll just put it out. Who knows? All right. So, uh, Maybe something is useful. So basically, uh, so you tell me when I should stop. I will stop. Just one, just two. Yeah. Okay, the schedule now. Well, well, let me uh, talk to you. Yeah. So, okay. The class started in nine. Not today, uh, but uh, what is the general schedule? Every day, two classes, or every what time? Not every day. Uh, why, don't, why don't you send him the yeah, whole schedule? Yeah, because, uh, yeah, but they were told that it's uh, yeah. no, the students know, and also the people were yeah. the information. Yeah. Yeah. You have them. So no. basically, the, the no, it's your total disaster. Nine o'clock in the next class. Yeah. 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 It's changing, so she has to give you precisely. Yeah. So why? Why I don't fix, know. Why not fix it? Uh, it, it, it is all fixed. Yeah. You can't change it every day. No, it's not changing, it's all fixed. But you have not been able to do that. That's it, no discussion, just okay. give him the material. Okay. Today there is a class at 12, yeah. tomorrow you can send me. So please tell me, okay. shall, I, shall I not uh, give my lecture? I mean, the point no. is that every day, no, this is either, either the students don't know, I think I, I'm not. So henceforth, you just send me an email. All right. So you, uh, but night, you have to tell me when I have to stop because every day I have to, cannot finish my lecture because so you, today is a 15 minute delay. So I, but next henceforth. No, no, that's not the point. The students have to go to another class. So what do I do? I cannot encroach in somebody's class. Yeah, but then that is the time table that is set. Uh, no, no discussion is needed right now. My problem is today. When should I stop? You dictate to me if I should finish my lecture or if I should stop uh, after lecture. Okay. And then the next class starts at Yes. So I'll meet you around 11.45 just to realize. <laughs> if you don't. So I'll come again. All right. So basically, let me start. Uh, so it started 20 minutes later than the time. Light, please. Did you turn the light off? I've got the legacy up, I don't Anyway, uh, we shall we shall move. So this is from yesterday. So I told you yesterday the big theory of Peter Mitchell for which he received the Nobel Prize. What's the theory? Repeat. I repeat a lot of things to make sure that you understand what's going on. And if you don't, you ask them too. So you have a membrane, and electrons flow from one to the other in photosynthesis because of light reactions. One side gets negatively charged, and the other side gets positively charged. And when there's a negative charge, then the protons, the positive charge, flow in, and they come into inside the membrane. And so there is a proton gradient produced, and this has energy, so this does not happen by itself. It requires energy to move. So it has energy. So it goes back through the ATP synthase, and that energy is used to make it. That's the idea of this gentleman for which he was given the Nobel Prize. I thought to show you a picture. He was a theoretician, but here he was caught doing an experiment. All right, so I have published this picture. 
and it's not easy to get from the Nobel Committee because the Nobel Committee wants to sell it for at least five hundred dollars, and I don't can't afford to buy pictures from them. So I have friends who know who, who have pictures. All right, so that is it. Now I started talking about Robert Emerson. And now you can record it, of course, this is my problem. Ah, so we discovered what is called the red drop in Photoshop. It's maybe a little bit of light, or there's no way, only one type of light. Can you turn on and off the light or not? Like, all right. <laughs> That's all right. So, what was the major discovery? I think it's all right. You can read it, right? Yes. So, just leave it, leave it like that. Tony Jesse. So, as I started telling you about him, he got together with Charles and Louis, the physicist, and they did that. So, you have to understand the experiment. So, they have, you have the light, I know, wavelengths of light. I'm, I hope you are familiar with light, 400 nanometers. <laughs> Let's say 700 nanometers. It's blue light in this region, and then it's green light in the 500 nanometer region, and the yellow, orange, and the red. So when they make this measurement, they found that there was a big dip. Photosynthesis was inefficient in some part of the blue region. So they explained it. Why? They said you have carotenoids, which Somebody said yellow was missing in my time, and they do not efficiently transfer energy to chlorophyllate, which does the reaction. Therefore, there's inefficient energy excitation, energy transfer from carotenoids that absorb them. That's one thing. Some carotenoids are actually in the cell wall. They cannot take part in food. So all those things were the reason. However, however. In this part, which is a red light, chlorophyll is still absorbing, and you are dividing by the oxygen coming out by the photons absorbed. So even though it's low absorption, you have low oxygen, you divide one by the other, you should get a high number. So you expect a high number, which is the blue line that I've drawn, uh, up to here. But here's a big drop. Here's almost zero photosynthesis. Let's say 710 nanometers. So this was a red drop. It was a total puzzle, a challenge to the field. How come if chlorophyll is doing it? How come it is not efficient? What's wrong with it? And there were many theorists who worked on it, but they couldn't figure it out. So that was the discovery. Red drop. Then the quantum requirement I mentioned to you, and I hope you remember the number. Barbert, this number. He obtained a minimum quantum that was required in this experiment was 11 quanta per oxygen molecule involved. So 8 to 12 was the number range. So at that time, as I said, this was 1943. Then there was a famous Nobel laureate whose name I mentioned, James Frank. He worked with another physicist, Hartzfeld, who was a postdoctor perhaps. Also, a famous physicist. They gave a theory of how you can explain this is already in 1941, before Emerson's experiment, even though there were other experiments of Emerson. So, Frank knew about those experiments. They were published in 1939. Yeah, yeah. So, what Frank and Emerson said, oh, we shall devise a way to explain this result. So, the, the actual origin of the two light reactions was. Given by Frank and Hertzfeld, but they but nobody understood their paper because it was by physicists and they wrote in physical terms. However, the student of Frank, he is a winner with he understood it, and in 1945 he made a diagram. And in this diagram, so he made a diagram and he said, ah, and this is still correct. That is the beauty of it. So he said, oh, uh, light reactions, four of them, because you have to get four 
electron charge of water molecule, takes a molecule Y, and there is a reducing molecule Z, and then it makes transfer the hydrogen atom, which is like transferring electron, uh, from Z to Y. And this Z oxidized, then picks up the electron from water oxidation. Precisely what we have to do. And then there's another right reaction in which something X becomes reduced, and then this reduced X works in CO2 and produces the carbon hydrogen. a fantastic part. Explaining things that we are now looking for. So I want to show you. Are you the same the below? So did he further get into this stuff? <coughs> so what I'm saying that my my lectures also to some extent initial one are the evolution of the thought and the people to read it. And this is important, uh, I think, for young people to recognize that it's all not in the final text. So now what he, he had heard of an experiment done by a man named Doisens, Lou Doisens in the Netherlands, who just passed away, we're writing a good book. So Doisens said cytochrome, which we mentioned many times, is oxidized as well as reduced. But he didn't know much about it at that time. You will see his experiment. So Rabinovich read these papers of Doisens. And in 1956, before the two light reactions of the previous system available, he wrote, this is a cult, I have taken. Not many people know that, because it's an almost 2,000 page book. It's on page 1862. And of course, I know it because I was a student, he showed me. And after that, I didn't give it. People read that book. I call him Eugene. We don't call him Professor of the Bernard as well. And his first name, that's how I find the first name, Eugene. Uh, so two quanta will be needed to transfer each of the four required hydrogen or electrons. It's the same thing electrons or protons far from water to the cytochrome, and then from the cytochrome to the final electron. Precisely what we talked about. Already said in 1950. And I, I just do a little scene just to remind you. So now, these things are going on, and Robert Emerson uh, was hired at University of Illinois at Urbana uh, to be to head a laboratory called the Photosynthesis Laboratory. In 1940, late 1940s. I don't quite remember when he came there. He came there and he started still worrying about the red drop. Why on earth there is no photosynthesis? So he did a brilliant experiment. Simple. All the experiments seem to be brilliant. Simple experiments. So he took, so here you remember again the Wavelength of light, this is red light. You can see at 729, this is this is not an He has almost no photosynthesis. So what he did is, let me just take it from one of my What he did, he put another beam of light. So, so let us let us look at the data. I guess there's no water. Huh? I see my work. So the rate of photosynthesis in 700 nanometer light, far red light, okay? Ah, so, oops. All right, so here I am. So you measure the rate of photosynthesis in far red light, let's say take 700 light. And let us say you get two units of photosynthesis. And then you add, uh, then you take, let's say, 750 nanometer light, another orange light, and you measure photosynthesis. And these are all low light intensity. That's where quantum is not matter. And you get 
Now, when Emerson added the two lights together, you plus 20 plus 2. You should get 22 because you're in a linear part of the curve. This was not what he found. He found the rate was 32. It wasn't an accident. This was, as I mentioned before, I was there in 1957. Uh, paper was published in the City of National Academy of Science by Emerson, Chalmers, and C. Chalmers was his associate who grew algae. He just ran with one, two, put these things together, and Emerson made the measurements. And then it was published, and it shook the world because there was an enhancement of 30 minus 22, 18, so four, four, increase. So, how, how, how does that mean? Okay, so when you already had an idea that two light reactions are. So, because he was using different wavelengths of light, he thought one long wavelength system and a short wavelength system, so there are two for the system, two systems, and they are cooperating together when the both lights are falling on them at the same time. So this cooperation, from this cooperation, they got the, he got the concept E, not the N. The other two uh, the associates was only going out. Uh, well, I think they're only if you know, uh, dedicated in how to stand the great uh, instruments. So they all used to be. So this was the discovery which fit it in with all was in the literature, but nobody had read that literature except for him, but who wrote it? All right. So, <coughs> well, at the same time, there was a Dutchman named Bethel Koch, very famous Dutchman, Bethel Koch. He was in a city called Wageningen in the Netherlands, and he discovered. Uh, I mentioned the photosynthetic unit, you know, right? And he discovered there must be a photo enzyme. He discovered that there was a very small absorption chain in one wavelength of light uh, at 700 nanometer light. And there was a spectrum. Something changed the wavelength, and something came up. And later, the physicists and the chemists thought, when that happens, when an absorption increases at 800 nanometer light, approximately, and decreases, that means a cation has been produced, a positive charge. The chlorophyll chemists already knew that when you produce a cation, it's chlorophyll plus. You have a positive absorption chain at 820 nanometers and a negative. So therefore, it was immediately the cock to discover the first reaction center of photosynthesis. I thought it was from one I should start later. So therefore he was thinking already, you see, he discovered this in 1956 to 57. Okay. Uh, so two light effects on it in 1959, just after a merchant. So he put one light, colored light beam, P700 was oxidized, meaning Lost an electron, it was P700 plus. And he added the <coughs> second light, that's the orange light, or any other light in system, I should call it for, for the system now, is this thing. Is this. So it was a push and pull effect. So you, you have an electron, and let us say, and I take the electron away, you have lost the electron, become P700 plus, and then you just bring the electron back. <coughs> So she is the photosystem too, and I was the photosystem. So there was the antagonistic effect of light one and two. This was his discovery. It was not recognized by people. <laughs> he had put it in a paper that I, I read. Uh, it was hidden in a paper. It was only recognized in 1963 in the Naval Park as a movement. So at that time, I recognized his work. Uh, in, 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 in,
Yeah, we, we can get that up. All right, now, but the really challenge to Emerson. Oh, by the way, I, I, I told you I had some stuff. So Emerson's experiment, uh, those of you who have studied these little talks perhaps know this. Uh, this is the apron that Emerson wore when he had discovered the entire hat. This is precisely the same apron who wore during the experiment. And I have them, and you can see all the holes, because many times he worked with acid, and the acid would fall, and uh, he would be cleaning something, and a little uh, white stuff will come in. And I wrote the word emerson, so everybody knows it in mind. Uh, I was fortunate to get this after his death. All right, so uh, now, so Emerson said, chlorophyll B does the reaction. One reaction and chlorophyll A does the other reaction. And I was a PhD student. I said, talk to, there was a group meeting. That's why I encourage people to have group meetings because you can always hear new things. There was a group meeting and a student of Rabinowitz named Steve Brody, he challenged Emerson. He said, What do you mean chlorophyll B does one reaction? This is impossible. He said, Why? Impossible. He said, there's a PhD thesis from 1952 by Lou Doisons, whose name I mentioned before. Lou Doisons has shown that if I give you a chlorophyll B, a chlorophyll A, no, somebody else. Let's say you a chlorophyll B, a chlorophyll A. And if I give you light, you don't keep it. You transfer 100% to chlorophyll A. 100%. You don't lose any light anymore, any energy. Because you transfer 100% of And that was Doisons' PhD thesis. So therefore, there's no way you, the chlorophyll A, can do any reaction because you've given everything to her. So I said to myself, well, <laughs> I talked to a person, he was alive, and he said, oh, yeah, I, I, I don't believe in it. I believe only myself. I'm not going to believe Steve Rodi or anybody else. I would start doing experiments. But for my diet, I go to Samuel. Uh, so, what I discovered, uh, and my wife would say, that he was wrong. As Doyson had said, all energy goes from B to A. Therefore, there was a chlorophyll A band in the spectrum of the which he had missed because he had not used the wavelength of light. Because his oh, mind was already set with chlorophyll B. Therefore, he only used light which went to chlorophyll B. No light that he put which went in chlorophyll A. Of course, they all light goes in both systems, but it's a matter of proportion. So, in that case, this is the door to which Emerson walked, and this is the door to Otto Warburg box. And Warburg was wrong, and Emerson was right. And this is the door to which I walk for my PhD. There's no more there. So this experiment shows the action spectrum of Emerson and Nelson stuff, showing a band in chlorophylle and a band in chlorophylle in green algae and a band in chlorophylle in bad. So see, I proved contrary to Emerson's concept that both four systems run by chlorophylle, but of different forms, which was discovered by another scientist in California named Sidney So my paper cites French, Doyson, and Emerson. All right. Huh. That's another story. So I told you already that Doyson's 1952 thesis on excitation is a classic of all that. He also discovered the reaction center in bacteria, two forms of chlorophyll, active and inactive, we call it. The inactive one was the one that was being active in both system one. So he had already thought that there are two things happening. Energy transfer efficiency from active three to chlorophyll. When Eugene wrote, but anything of no which red, do doing it. Look here, here the proof. And when I was met at a meeting when Eugene talked, he was always listening to every word because he knew that some wisdom in that. Right? All right, so let's go on. What's the key? Can you see it? Uh, so we don't need to translate on. Yeah? So this is the key experiment. 
All right, let's let me. So let us say I am radical map. This is the people who are there. And this is this is this is Yana. That's his expression. And so what he did, let's suppose you are photosystem one and photosystem two. Light comes in you because you were part of light or whatever. So what do you get P seven hundred plus your X X R and then you pull an electron from somewhere. I am cytochrome, I give you my electron. So so what happens to cytochrome? It's long electron. It is oxidized. Now we could lie to you, and then you give your electron to me. What happens to me? I'm reduced, right? This is the simple and key experiment that Joseph and Amir did. Did I give you that? No. <laughs> All right. So you can see the experiment in 1961. This experiment published in Nature. Most of the top papers. Now this is after. The Z scheme was enunciated by Robin Hill in 1960. But Joyce had already knew what was going on because this experiment didn't take a day to publish. It was being done for a year. So he knew. So like one, cytochrome map was oxidized, like two, and they, he even studied how the herbicides work right then. So you put a herbicide, which is called diuron and DCME, and then what happens? Photosystem two. So cytochrome is oxidized. You went for one of these. One. <laughs> so you you are oxidized cytochrome mass, but if you kill the plant by putting the diuron, and if no electrons are coming, the cytochrome mass will remain oxidized. No reducing. No electrons are coming from one. And that was also was in the same thing for the nature. All right, so let's go on. You will have to tell me when to stop because. Uh, all right, so now everything is good, and now we are in a new era of X ray photography. The physicists come in and they say, make a preparation, bring it to us, we will do the structure. We will tell you where or what happened. So the, the very first one that I told you was done by. Michel Dysonoff for a Nobel, for which they received the Nobel Prize. However, in the photosystem, <laughs> oxygenic plants and algae, this was not done then. Hartwig Laboratory, this is Hartwig. Here is Hartwig. I mean, if the light is off, you see, but it doesn't matter. This is Hartwig holding a glass. This is me lifting him. This is Dr. Froman, who did this. Who did, uh, <laughs> the preparation, and I forget uh, he was he was the first author, and it's Athena Julian who took over the work after his retirement. And now he's a professor somewhere else. So they, they did the structure, and and they could find where the manganese was, where the reaction center of photosystem two was, P six eighty was, where the fighting is, where Q A is, where Q B. Everything was from. Of course, it was a low resolution structure, but it is clear that now the bicarb and the uh, work on uh, was already predicted to be there in the non iron different field. Total contradiction to whatever this idea it was. So, anyway, so they, and they, now, they knew all the structure. Now, today, Mina et al. in Japan. At one point nine nine chances per structure, I'm not showing you I'll show those details to you later. Right now this is just a basic discussion of the discovery. Uh, Z scheme, you see the scheme. Um, is it easy to turn the light off or brilliant <laughs> Oh you have to go somewhere. Anyway, yeah. So you, you, we can we can talk about this while it's here. So this is Robin Hill. He is the discoverer of what is called the Hill reaction. Those of you who are in plant physics, they know. He is the discoverer of the Hill reaction. Long time before, Robin Hill, Mr. 
to the Chief of the Man of the same bag whose door I told him. He's sitting there. This is Martin Cayman, the discoverer of carbon 14, and this is Robert Emerson telling them about this discovery. In the lab, chatting, and one person is so, during 1960, there were many schemes and discussions of the meeting in light and light. <coughs> Robin Hill published the first three schemes in with Faye Bendel, who is another story, because she's wife of Derek Bendel, and she is really not a, uh, uh, you know, publishing normally paper. The question of Robin Hill, and Hill wrote the uh, uh, this paper, gave it to him, and asked her to tell us it. And she came back with a beautiful paper, and he sent it as Hill and Bender. So, uh, Mrs. Bender uh, has refused to talk to me, but her husband, who just recently died, told me, well, oh, she's very shy about this. And she doesn't know why her name was put in. But I think she made a very important contribution to the paper, otherwise nobody would understand. <laughs> so I uh, really respect her, I don't know, I never met her. So this is the, basically the scheme. Uh, now, how I the scheme? Is it something new? The Beatles really took to life that. Yes. What was new was only one thing. Hill knew how you need energy to make ATP. He knew how the mitochondria Function. So he said, you have an electron here, and this electron has go from this high energy level to this, yes, you have energy, and you must make ATP. And so that was his major thermodynamic concept of energy that was put in. Of course, Robin Hill knew about Emerson's paper, but he never tried it. And he, not because he was a bad fellow, he was just forgetful about it. I talked to him, he said, well, of course I knew about him. I said, well, I visited him, what do you mean? I don't know about it. So I said, you didn't sign it. <laughs> he said, oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, but then he wrote another paper, citing an uh, enhancement of paper, but didn't sign Emerson, by mistake citing somebody else. But that's it. So I'm just telling you these things, nuances uh, of life that uh, go on. All right, so here is Robin Hill. Yeah, yeah. And this is Giorgio Forti, the ambassador of photosynthesis from Italy. Giorgio Forti discovered many things in biochemistry of photosynthesis. Uh, so there was a conference of 2,000 people sitting in the audience in total darkness at that time. And Robin Hill disappeared. Ah, everybody was wondering. Where did he go? <laughs> well, he didn't speak without notes. His notes were falling down. So he had to pick them up. <laughs> so that's the story around him. And Giorgio carried his bag. He always carried everything in his bag. How is that? Uh, so the discoverer of the heavy action, several cycles, and the famous. All right, now we are coming here. And I think I should have. This is what we, the major discover. So we will be discussing the these scheme in great detail, telling you all about it. We will, <coughs> sorry. I don't know. I'm very bad. Uh, you, you have to tell me when I have to stop because I, I don't want to keep you. All right, so we shall not discuss this. These are detailed schemes because we know every single step and the time it takes and where the bottom is. It. So if we're going to engineer this part of the synthesis, we have to know that where is the bottom is and what can do that. So as I said, we'll talk more about it later. Here is Pierre Jones, the grandson of my king, four Nobel medals in the science. He is by the high priest of oxygen, who gave us oxygen first. He gave the oxygen first to us, and the grandson of my king. 
Uh, well, this is the famous plot. Uh, can I finish this uh, plot and then? Uh, so maybe you can turn the lights on. We need more things. Uh, I, I will, can you give me something? Uh, we have to have a water. Too much slow. So let's see. Uh, four electrons. Okay, four electrons and uh, four hydrogen atoms. Uh, and two. All right. So normally uh, I have you know, a lecture with the dream ball. So, uh, so, we, so we have four electrons. So, everybody thought as soon as they turned the light on, we should have oxygen. But there was no oxygen. So, you know, the experiment. You get one flash of light, no oxygen. Second flash of light, no oxygen. Third flash of light, no Big oxygen. And then, after that, in the series of this book, this is the discovery of the risk called the oxygen source. I've written about it in the scientific American Archaeology of Mastery. So, how does it work? We will discuss the details later in the course. But right now, just to show you, there is a peer video with the discovery of this. But did he understand it? He wrote a theory based on some Nobel laureate work, some French Nobel laureate. Then, Bessel Cox, the man I mentioned before, okay. He went to Paris and spent day and night talking to Pedro <laughs> and came back and he had to prove that you have a system in which it is a clock and you have five components and I we shall discuss this later day for the details uh, how the oxygen comes out. The time management wants to spend. Uh, next time we'll have the loop, but you can take your piece away because uh, I think I should move on to the end. Uh, what could I do with my thing? Ah. So uh, we will explain it in the class. And with somebody can help me bring balloons. Uh, you know how many? All right. Here yeah, with the American Mafia. Myself and Ken Sauer, Ken Sauer, University of California, Berkeley, did many detailed experiments in this. And uh, the last point I want to make is what I mentioned before already with Bob Buchanan on the paper now, I should have called it the dark reaction or the light reaction because the enzyme needs light. And so a new paper that just appeared yesterday. So I I invited him and edited and accepted the paper, and but I pointed out the mob as we call him, which is right. You were right about carbon reaction. So same time wrong about light reaction because the light reaction has also batteries between it, and therefore he said, "No, oh, you write another one." So, so, all right, I I think we should not uh, take the time. I uh, just want to show you some, some pictures. This is Benson, this is Basham, who really, who really did most of the work. Uh, if you tell me when yet, oh, how much? Oh, okay, okay. I, I was rushing for that. <laughs> I was just the time. Okay, so uh, let's, let's go back on. All right, we, we got that. So this is the Calvin Benson Basham type. Because Basham was a PhD student who did everything. But we can't call it Bachman's Because Bachman told me, Koji, please, please, don't add my name. 